What's happening guys? Welcome back to Redbeard's Garage and this is a little different type of video but I like to listen to music in here when I'm working off camera and the only speaker we have is that Hercules. Give a good zoom in on that puppy. And that's just a little Bluetooth speaker. It's not that loud. It's a great speaker for at the beach or sitting outside. So I want to put a car radio in my toolbox. So this is the US General Series 3 and I have the top cabinet and I'm wanting to install a car radio in there. The reason I want to go with the car radio because a house receiver is huge and bulky. They don't produce a lot of power and I don't have a good spot to set it. I mean, I could set one on top, but I just don't want to do that. So uh, this company reached out to us. I don't know how you pronounce that. I think it's Eon or something e-o-n-o-n -O -O -N. links are in the video's description as well as a discount code for this puppy so we have links down there for this radio this is a 10 inch android tablet with wireless carplay that's going to be pretty sick because i want to mount this in the back of my toolbox and then i'm going to power it off a power inverter this is a 12 volt this particular one this is not the actual one we're using but it's the same uh, thing this is a 30 amp one so what we're going to do is i'm not going to run any speakers off the head unit i'm going to amplify everything because we have amplifiers sitting around we have a punch one channel 500 watt and a punch two channel 500 watt so what i'm going to do is i have these bose speakers shown on screen right now uh, that the church wasn't using no more so i got them from the church we're going to power those bose speakers with this two channel and then with this punch one channel we're going to power these image dynamics 10 inch subs that came out of Braxton's truck. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna run the 100 amp version of these power supplies, two of them, to power on each amp. And then we'll run a 10 amp little wall outlet to power the radio, because this thing shouldn't pull more than five amps. And then we'll have a sick freaking loud system in the garage. I'm so excited, because I've always loved car audio. So we're gonna pull this open and show, this has 4G internet, you can put a SIM card in it, has GPS, uh, Wi-Fi, everything. They're pretty sweet little radios, and they actually have a really good equalizer in them. So of course you got a bag full of all these connections. Uh, you got USBs. This, I believe, is the little uh, SIM card holder, I think, right there. And you know all the harnesses for all the stuff, like mic, subwoofer out. You got all types of stuff. And then the main head unit itself is a floating tablet. So you can see the main head unit mounts in the dash and then you have a ribbon cable type deal and then you can adjust the height of the radio as well. It's on a ball socket and you can turn it like if you want to angle towards the driver. I'm thinking about using this in the F100 build when we do it, but it's a 10 inch Android tablet. It has a, a quad core Snapdragon processor. It has four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of memory, which that's a big thing you're gonna look at with these radios because a lot of them will give you one gig of RAM and like a single core processor or something and they're just sluggish. I expect this one to perform really well because it's four gigs of RAM and got a quad core processor. Instead of cutting a hole in the back of my, my box, I have that little black bin that comes with the toolbox and it's really just a catch-all and I don't use it. So I'm gonna cut a square hole, a rectangle hole in it to mount the body of this radio so I can pull it in and out and the harness can go through some grommets in the back of the toolbox. So It'll be a quick, quick, easy install process. Then it comes with the GPS antenna as well as this is a 4G antenna, microphone, stuff like that. USB, another USB cable, and another USB cable. I'm curious about boot up time. It doesn't matter in here, but it would in a car. Uh, I expect boot up time to be pretty quick because of the, you know, the specs that it has, but we will see. So now we got to test fit it and start. Oh, and what's cool is radio has these spring-loaded ears so you can slot it on there this is kind of hard with it not mounted in anything you pull the ears back slot it on there and you can adjust the height that the radio sets the screen sets on the body of the radio that makes any sense but that's what it look like it's gonna be sweet in the toolbox because you open it flip a switch how i'm gonna have it wired is you flip a switch for the key switch wire it turns it on i can connect to my phone and run Apple CarPlay. Sounds like you need to make the toolbox a vehicle. Yeah, yeah, next we'll mount a Predator on it, build a little <laughs> chassis, a little sidecar that I drive it in. Uh, so we need to pull this box off, which it just slides up and pulls it out. So I literally had nothing in it. The only thing I'm worried about is depth. You can see it's wider than this is deep. 
So what I can actually do is offset this some to make it work and clear all the harnesses and stuff. You know, like cut a hole in it, of course. Just use some L brackets to bolt it at the depth I want. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna pull this, uh, I'm gonna start doing some measuring off camera and plug up all the harnesses to see how much room I actually need and we'll get it adapted. Okay, so it's been about a week or two since I made the intro video. So I went ahead and mounted up the radio and it looks awesome. So how I ended up having to do it was I went to Walmart actually and bought these little L brackets and they mounted up to, I did have to drill a different hole in it to line up with the radio and then I just self tapped them. So what is awesome about this is I can move this anywhere along the back, back wall of the toolbox and I did put the microphone, sorry you're getting a glare off the lot, but the microphone is mounted here. Here's the on off switch and I actually don't have the power inverter on right now. And then the harness runs right there. I did get some zip tie anchors to keep that you know nice and straight, but it runs through a grommet right there. So that's what it looks like. I think it's awesome. It doesn't affect any of my power tools or the layout of my toolbox. And uh, this remote here turns on the 500 watt amps. Uh, they're actually a thousand watts those uh, rocker fosgates uh, everybody knows that that series of fosgates always pushes more uses a, a hundred amp fuse on it so it's technically a thousand watt but this on off switch uh, controls a box plugged up to the wall that powers on both amplifiers the reason this set for so long was this is so i end up going with a 50 or sorry this is a 600 watt power supply so 60 or 50 amp is what this is rated for um so this is a 50 amp this runs the two channel amp because it's not pushing as much power through it as the uh, subwoofer amp i went with a 100 watt version on the subwoofer and then that 30 i showed at the first of the video is actually powering this radio and it can power any other accessories like if i wanted to put you know some usb chargers that's 12 volt or just some post on my toolbox like back in the day on my old workbench here you can see that toggle switch and that was hooked up to a pc power supply so i could flick on that switch and it would turn on the power supply and i had a 12 volt rail to test radios or 12 volt equipment but i don't use that anymore i think it'd be cool to add that same thing to this so i have a 12 volt rail that i can test out electronics this ended up being bad this is a good one they sent me a replacement so today we're going to pull off the bad one it just it powers on but it puts out no amperage like it shows 12 12.3 volts out of the post uh, the one mounted on the back but it did not push out any amps so it wouldn't power anything so we got to swap it out for this one and then ship the bad one back so i got to pull out this uh toolbox to get to it we got to add a power strip then other than that we'll be ready to let you hear it so if we walk to the back of the cabinet everything is concealed you literally can unplug a couple of harnesses or a couple of outlets and then you can move this toolbox anywhere so we have the subwoofer amp powered by the 100 amp power supply it has run down because of the way the outlets are i had to run dual eight to one four then i have a hundred amp breaker then we have the 30 amp that i showed at the first of the video this is going to power um the radio and any other accessories and the radio of course is fused so we don't want to worry about that then we have our two channel amp uh, which is our mids amp and it is powered off that faulty um six or 50 amp so to make sure that was our problem we end up hooking this directly up to the 30 amp and it worked uh, so it definitely was the power supply so everything is pretty well managed i do have to do a little bit more wire manage i tried to use these sticky top and they're garbage so i bought the ones that you use a self-tapper and i can hold the cables up so i'm gonna swap out this power supply i'm gonna do some cable management put on a power strip and then uh we'll turn this thing on and see how loud it'll get okay so i have my lights off in my toolbox so you guys can see the screen uh, because it reflects on the camera but uh this is the radio how to turn it on we flip the switch and then it'll power up it powers up extremely fast like that was after being off for like an hour so this will pop up into uh your airplay so you can hit home you can go through like you got a couple different home pages you can change the layout like the themes and stuff 
you know there's different styles you can do anyways so it has a ton of equalizer i think this is a 16 band equalizer so of course 25 all the way to 16,000. you got a ton of adjustment i kind of just do this little swoop motion because i like my my treble to be higher and the mids to be you know and then you can control your subwoofer on and off you can turn this like bass booster thing loudness stuff like that but i've got everything set just like this where my amps are right under clipping then you can you know set up where you want the position that doesn't pertain to us but uh so yeah but there's a ton i mean the thing is super responsive i was actually very pleased with this radio so much that i want to put this one in my or one of these in my f100 when i do it i like it a lot it's very uh very nice smooth running i haven't had any issues of course i haven't used it for a long time i did run into one issue with the um the remote wire wasn't putting out 12 volts i don't know if it's like a, a five volt remote wire so it wouldn't turn on both amps it would turn on one but it wouldn't turn on the other so i end up wiring it so to turn on my amps i just take this controller and i hit on i hear a relay kick in the back that's kicking on both amps and bam subs are on because the music is played but we got to pause that because we'll get copyrighted <laughs> so i think it's pretty awesome though that i just flip this one switch turns on both amplifiers i do need to go get before i can push my toolbox back i need to go get a power strip to mount on the wall for things like this light and my charging bank uh, because right now my uh everything's unplugged other than the radio but I think it's a super awesome setup. But I think everything works extremely well on this radio. I'm really surprised. I've had these, like the Tesla radio, my F-150, absolute trash. Thing was garbage. This might be bass boosted, so I don't know. So I not, might want to turn it down a little bit more if it is bass boosted. I think it's a really cool setup. I think it looks awesome. And big shout out to Anani Non for sending the radio. But uh, it's a pretty sweet setup. And I eyeballed everything and I think I got a pretty dang level. So what I was saying is I was gonna use these Image Dynamic 10s that I've had. They was out of Braxton's truck and I got them from Braxton when he sold his truck. They didn't sound as good. So my buddy had two Solo Barrick L5 subs, the 12 inch versions in the kicker box with the side port. So I stood those up beside my washer, pointing towards the wall. And um, what would be nice is to put something else like that on the other side of the garage, because when you get to the fabricating area, you hear no bass whatsoever, other than the mid bass coming out of the bows that's beside the toolbox. So it's literally, I mean, it's a lot of airspace. So you leave the middle of the garage, you hear no bass over there, ton of bass over here, which makes sense because that's where the subs are. But I may mix it up and take out the subs and then run something else off that subwoofer amp not sure yet i might run a couple tower speakers throughout the garage like six of them you know three down this wall three you know hang them up on the walls over there i don't know yet but this sounds really good it's screaming loud and super clear just you don't hear bass so why would i have all this without no bass but yeah so uh let's know what you think of the toolbox radio super easy i didn't have to cut anything other than this box that was unusable Anyways, I don't know why YouTube is doing this. Um, maybe I could play some, see I can't play anything but royalty free. I'd have to put like a thumb drive or something. But uh, it's it works extremely well. I just need to figure out the internet thing. Um, maybe it's just, it doesn't have that good of a Wi-Fi antenna. You know, just because it's made to be in a car, not necessarily hooked up to a garage Wi-Fi or whatever, but I like it. so. Now that we're done, we can hit that. You can hear fans shut down. The fan's still running for the radio. We flip that, and then the radio takes a second, shut down, and then it goes off. Awesome setup. 
And I can adjust this up or down, but I like it here because I can get my drills out and stuff and not hit anything. It's completely out of the way and super nice setup. So I'll put links to this radio and the discount code they gave us and also the power um, supplies that I'm using off of Amazon. They're pretty cheap. This all cost me since I already had the amps and of course we just provided the radio. Uh, the power supplies and wiring, I think I'm at $200 in this. Thank you guys so much for watching. Check out the links. If it's just a boring video, then freaking don't watch it a second time. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> thank you for watching. We love you and God bless.